major players. A, who are they? I mean, I know who they are, but I want to get your take on it. And I want you to tell the listeners, what is their current posture? How would you describe what's happening in the stock market? Is it going to be deflationary or is it going to be inflationary? Or could we see a new form of stagflation? What should folks expect out there with the 1.5 quadrillion, with all the new debts, with acceleration of derivatives since 2008, with all the same players insulated above the law? Um, it looks to me like imploding things on purpose to consolidate them, a scorched earth creative destruction approach. Um, what's the weather report financially? Yeah, I mean, certainly that 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 consolidation of of, of wealth and and that that power and that capital, that leveraged capital, which is which was what is meant by those all those derivatives, has been such a problem before the two thousand eight crisis, and and it's always debt. It's always been. This idea that if you push too much debt, whether it's the form of loans like they used to be back 100 years ago, whether it's in the form of complex derivative securities that, that aren't regulated, that aren't transparent, that are off book, that even when we talk about the assets of a bank, we don't really know where all the little ties to all the offshore bank accounts are because they're not really consolidated into the books that we are actually supporting at the end of the day with our deposits and with the FDIC insurance and all the government subsidies that go to these banks. So that's where we're at. And one of the reasons that currently the stock market is so high is not because the general American is feeling like they've had this a hundred plus percent return on their personal life and their personal finances and their personal salaries. No, it's because there's this additional influx of cheap money, of subsidies for debt that has been engineered by the Federal Reserve through these large banks, of which, of course, J.P. Morgan Chase is the largest bank. It's the most politically and financially connected bank, and it has been um, throughout history for the last hundred years. What, it, what, what this enables um, to happen is the stock market rise, which is pumped up by this sort of artificial euphoria, which is based on zero interest rate money to the large players. We don't get zero interest rate money. They do. And they have the ability to leverage it, whether it is through derivatives, through ETFs, through various bets in the stock market, through timing the stock market, through buying back their own uh, shares, through all sorts of different mechanisms that have had the effect of creating this big stock market bubble. And we've seen it in the past. It's just not really been as dangerous as it is today because there is such a lack of understanding or restraint from the powers that be in Washington, from a regulatory perspective, from a policy perspective, this this is continuing. And and what's happening now is because there's no accountability, we are, no one's gone to jail, the fines that the Department of Justice has levied and the SEC has levied on these institutions are, 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 are tiny. They're less than a half of a percent of the assets of these big six banks, that they're a joke. And so when there's no recourse, when there's no reform, when there's no punishment, for using money in a way that devastates the global economy, it continues to get used. What we're seeing now in the stock market is one manifestation of where that money is going. So what happens going forward? I, I've said this before. I, I don't think this is, this is obviously not stable, good economic or financial policy, what's been going on since the crisis and into the crisis. It is not sustainable. But there is such a force of this bad policy and unsustainable policy that's had the effect of boosting the market, whereas I believe that we're going to be headed for a major crash because you cannot continue a policy of inflating a market with nothing real. And that is what we are we are visioning right now. Now, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. People ask me, you know, is it going to be a year from now, a half year? I, I don't really know. I'll say this. It should have been, it should have not gotten this high, and I believe it should have crashed sooner since it started moving after the 2009 influx of cheap money and of debt buying from the financial institutions. It should have happened sooner, but there's a lot of will on the part of Washington and the Federal Reserve to continue to keep it going. The ECB is instituting bond buying and zero interest rates almost. That, that It's a global partnership of propping up these markets and propping up the banks that move them. I Therefore, from, a, from an investment perspective, I look at this being a period of volatility right now. In other words, it's going to go up and down like we've been seeing for a little while with a tendency to go up because of this artificial support and ultimately a very steep decline on the other side because there's nothing real sustaining this, this support. And I, I think that's in a, in a couple years. I think it could happen sooner if there's a major derivatives transaction or something that unwinds that all the banks are involved in. It's usually about credit or currency. So it might be related to the Ukraine. It might be related to somewhere in Latin America. There's, there's a lot of 
chance that there are interdependencies and derivatives positions that these banks are intertwined in, as we see every time there's a crash that is going on right now. And so there's, there could be an external instigator. But right now, there's a tremendous amount of artificial stimulus going into this financial globalization markets and to the banks, into the stocks and into the derivatives. Nomi, you worked around these people. You work for you know, the head of Goldman Sachs reported into him in his office at the time. Uh, we see how John Corzine is above the law with the stuff he did with Goldman Sachs and then MF Global. Is there any way to get through to these people? Because I know they've scientifically set up their systems of control. They have their political hatchet men, their, their spin doctors, their formulas. But history shows that they always believe their formulas and then they start smoking their own propaganda and you get World War II, you get World War I, you get Roman collapse, you get, you get famines, you get serious disconnect, Marie Antoinette type, French Revolution stuff. And is there any way, knowing how these guys act, knowing how arrogant they are, I and mean, they make the Wolf of Wall Street pale in significance with their bravada or chutzpah or whatever you'd call it, is there any way to get through to these loons? Because, because anyone can look at where the world's going and tell they're not going to get out of this, and neither are we. And uh, can they stop themselves? Is there some way to get these people to act in a more sane way? I mean, why would they want to get rid of checks and balances for the people and then make themselves above the law? That sounds like a horrible world. Tyranny's not safe for anybody. Well, and, and, but, and, and they have been rewarded for bad behavior, and that's the problem that we have right now. Historically, there have been periods, for example, after the crash in 1929, where the bankers, they were total scam artists. They, they were tax evading. They were creating little companies named after family members. They were hiding shares. They were telling the public to buy shares while they were shorting shares. All this stuff has gone on. The difference was some of those guys got ejected, and new people came into place. And some of those guys got fined, and new people came into place. And there was a stability. Um, it wasn't perfect. A lot of things went wrong between, say, the 30s and the 70s, but there was more of a stability because there was an accountability on the side of some of these individuals who realized they had come to the abyss and yes they wanted and needed and got government support to get them out but they also took a step back of, of their own sort of accord or fear or whatever it was and what we've seen more recently though is is a much more dangerous use of the capital that they control jamie diamond uh you know last week was all contrite about how he was sorry you know maybe he he you know underestimated things but this is after jp morgan chase the bank has paid all these fines which to the public look like a lot but to them are absolutely nothing it was probably after some like media consultation that someone told them look you're kind of being yeah just just so you know in case you didn't realize people think you're a jerk and try to be nice and then he did and then all of a sudden the media was all over over him saying he was sorry and that was somehow good and 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 we've moved on but the thing is you know that that's all just words you know the, the behavior hasn't changed the bets internally haven't changed the structure of the banks haven't changed they, they they've been rewarded by and jp morgan chase in particular has been rewarded by uh, allowing itself to buy bear stearns washington mutual having the government support having the federal connections and it continues on so what needs to happen for these guys to wake up they buy their own story you know they they buy the fact that they are sort of kings you know jamie diamond lloyd blank fine these, these these guys really buy the fact that they have dodged a major bullet they had a tremendously bad experience running their own institutions and they were bailed out big time big time epically by the government by us so they have these particular individuals have absolutely no reason to look within their banks and be worried because even if positions are going sour every single day, even if there's billions of dollars of losses accumulating on their books every single day, they know they've been shown that these things will get bailed out, that they will be covered. So what it requires, unfortunately, and this is this is a really bad situation that we're in right now because because so much has been covered up, we will see a bigger crisis. There will be a situation in the near future where these banks will have another bout of significant losses where we're going to talk about too big to fail again and wonder why we made these big banks bigger where we're going to wonder why we propped up when i say we i mean most of the media propped up these individuals as somehow you know, being great navigators of this of this uh situation of the crisis of obama and tim geithner and jack lew all having dodged this bullet and the reality is there's been nothing that has fundamentally changed so i can only see 
change coming from a bigger crisis and that either comes from within the financial markets themselves and the banks themselves and positions themselves that implode and we have this whole other round of of crisis management or it comes from individuals who say look this is too much we we don't believe that things have changed we think things have been whitewashed we need to do something about this because our economy our houses our savings you know our pensions our deposits are at risk otherwise I've been asking a lot of questions, and I want to get into your book here. Because sometimes you can reach the public through a novel, a historical novel, instead of just, you know, cold hard facts now. But in your gut, what else are you concerned about? And, and then, is there any positive news you've got for people? Honestly, the positive news that that, that I have, and and I do talk.